Okay, in this lesson we'll talk about differentials and <coughs> the differential of y is dy. The differential of x is dx. Let's see how those show up in a graph. So if we have a function, which is the blue line and then a tangent line, um, if we go away from the point of tangency, uh, we would call this change in x, delta x, and we could talk about the change in y here is delta y. The function uh, changed that much, and then we can also talk about the change in the tangent line. So when we look at this, uh, that distance is um, the differential of y. So the differential of y is the change in the y value of the tangent line. Delta y is the change in the y value of the function. Delta x is the same as the differential of x, dx. <coughs> then we can see a, a relationship uh, to the derivative. So if we say that f prime of x is the slope of the tangent line at that point. Um, then we can say that also when we look at just this red line and the components that we've, the distances that we've identified, dy and dx, so we can say that f prime is rise dy over the run dx. <coughs> and we've just been using this notation um, as being the same as the derivative and we can now see the connection, uh, how that appears in uh, terms of differentials. Now we can also say that the differential of y is f prime dx. So sometimes questions will ask about the differential of y. Um, we are going to focus on using a tangent line to approximate the y value of the function. So tangent lines are linear. They're easy to evaluate. And functions might be uh, difficult to evaluate. <coughs> but we can say that this y value is close to that y value as long as um, delta x and dx are small enough. So we'll say that um, the function is the cube root of x. So we need to find a tangent line uh, to this function at a point that's easy to evaluate without a calculator. So if we're dealing with 26, uh, we want to um, find easy, I'll just say easy x value near 26 because easy just means uh, easy depends on what the function is. So if we're trying to do cube root of 26 but we have 27 right next to 26 and we know the cube root of 27 that's easy to compute. So let's look at a graph. We have the cube root and we're trying to find the y value of this function at 26. So we're going to look beyond it at 27. We're going to make a tangent line at 27 and then look for the y value of the tangent line <coughs> at 26. So we're going to say that the y value of the tangent line is 
close to the y value of the function at 26. So most of our work is done dealing with 27. And then at the end, we'll use the 26. So for the tangent line, we have to find the slope and then do the point slope formula. The slope uses f prime. And if we look at this as being x to the 1 third, we can use the power rule. 1 third x to the negative 2 thirds. And we need to evaluate that at 27. f prime of 27. So that's the um, cube root of 27 is 3. Squared is 9 times 3 is 27. So the slope at 27, the slope of the tangent line is 1 over 27. And now we do the point slope formula. And we have x minus the, y, uh, x, minus the x value. We know that the y value, the cube root of 27, is 3. Distribute the 1 over 27, add 3, and we have 2. So that's the tangent line. And then we say that f of it didn't use f in the beginning, so why don't we just say that the cube root of 26 is approximately 1 over 27 times 26 plus 2. So that's going to be 2 and 26 27 The cube root of 26 On the calculator, the cube root of 26 from the calculator is 2.9625. And our approximation is 2.96296. All right, so we can see that uh, it's pretty close. and um, approximate 2.99 cubed using a tangent line. So pause the video and try that one. All right, some number cubed. So we're looking at f of x equals x cubed. Um, the graph looks like this. And we are <coughs> trying to find the y value at 2.99 and so we'll choose a number that's close to 2.99 let's choose 3 and at 3 we'll make a tangent line and then find the y value of the tangent line and say that it's approximately the y value of the function the graph is off but that's the concept we're going to draw a tangent line at x equals 3 and find its value at 2.99. So for a tangent line, we need the slope and the point slope formula. The slope is 3x squared. And the slope at 3 is 3 times 3 squared. Uh, point slope formula, we have 27x minus 
3 because we're using the tangent line. We're making the tangent line at x equals 3 uh, and 3 squared is 27. The y value at 3 is 27 so that's there. The slope is 27 and then we have 81 here Let's add 27, and we get the tangent line. Um, the approximation, we can say 2.99 cubed is approximately 27 times 2.99 minus 54. And that's 26.73. Um, if we do, if we did 2.99 cubed on the calculator, the calculator is 26.730899. So we got pretty close. So here's a variation of that, and it's just requiring that we read a graph to make a tangent line. All right, and we have a point at, this point is at 0 0.71. And we are trying to approximate <coughs> the y value of the function at 0.8. So if that's 0.7, we're trying to find that y value there. Okay, so we need a tangent line, and the tangent line in this case would have to be given because we don't know the function, so they're giving you a tangent line, and the tangent line is going to be at two and one third so we know that is two and one third and that would be given um, so we have a point of tangency we have another point on the line and we can find the equation of the tangent line and use it to approximate f of point eight so that's all the stuff that's given and now we make a tangent line. The equation of a tangent line. We need the slope <coughs> and point slope. The slope is y minus y x minus x is zero. negative 1 and 1 third divided by 0 0.7 um, this is negative 4 thirds and multiplied by 10 over 7 so we get negative 40 over 21 and point slope y minus y equals m x minus x so the point of tangency is here. These are the x and y values that we need to use, 0 0.7 and 1. And we have positive, because it's negative times negative, so we have 40 over 21 times 7 over 10. So rather than having to use a calculator, we can look at how this reduces 
to 4 thirds. y minus 1, negative 40 over 21x plus 4 thirds. And then we'll just add 1. Uh, add 1, we get 1 and Okay. Yeah, that's one and one third. Add one, we get two and one third. And our approximation f of point eight is approximately negative forty over twenty one times point eight plus two and one third. This is point eight zero. 952 and we should we can just leave it like that This is one, two, one, two. We're going to have points on a tangent line. This is given. And the graph of f is going like that. We're trying to find the y value at 2.2, <coughs> but we have a point of tangency at x equals 2. Okay, pause the video and try that. find the slope and find the equation of the tangent line. The slope is y minus y over x minus x. So here we have a point that is 2, 2 and this point is 0, 1. So we have 2 minus 1 over 2 minus 0. So we get 1 over 2. And y minus y equals m x minus. So we have an x value of 2.2, .2, a 2, and a 0. We need to make sure we choose the correct values. And we're always going to be focused on the point of tangency. So we need to use this x value and this y value. add 2. So we have the equation of the tangent line and then the approximation. f of 2.2 is approximately 1 half of 2.2 plus 1. We're using the tangent line but now we substitute 2.2 in there and that will be a 1.1 so we get 2.1. difference in delta y and dy are important. If there's a large difference, that means it would be a uh, not a good approximation if we uh, were approximating the y value of the function. So um, there's some questions like this in the book. We have a function. This is the x value of the point of tangency. And then we're going to say delta x and the differential of x. That is negative 0.1. Um, let's put this, let's connect it to what we've been looking at. So we have a graph 
shifted up one, and it's reflect and then reflected a parabola. They got reflected um, at one. If you put a one there, you'll be at negative one. So maybe that's negative one and that's one. We'll just make it fit. There's a tangent line there. And it's saying if you move to the left, point 0.1, um, how do these compare? So we have a tangent line at that point, and we're going to look at uh, point 0.9, because we're moving to the left, point 0.1. We'll go to point 0.9 and see what the y value is there. Uh, we also need to remember that the differential of y equals y prime dx. We saw that in the beginning of the lesson and it was written like this. So it's easy to find the differential of y and we also need to find delta y. So delta y is just going to be the actual change in the function. Um, we need to find if the tangent line is at 1 and we move to the left point 1 then we'll, we're dealing with these x values and we need to find the y values. So we have a y value here, y value there, and x values here. Um, and this is just going to be y evaluated at 0.9. And this is going to be y evaluated at 1. So looking at this, we have delta y is this y value minus that y value. we have y of 0.9 minus y of 1. If we put a 0.9 in there, we should get negative 0.62. And we put a 1 in there, and we get negative 1. So that's going to be 0.38. Then we have dy is going to be the derivative, which is negative 4x times dx. So dy is negative 4, x is 1, and the differential of x is negative 0.1. So that's going to be positive 0.4. And we can see that delta y is kind of close to dy. Alright, do the same thing with this function. Pause the video. And when we graph it, we're going to see that it's um, a pretty obvious answer. If we don't graph it and we just rely on these mechanics, maybe we'd be confused uh, at the outcome. But here we have the uh, y-intercept is 1, the slope is 2, so you go up 2 over 1. Um, and we're, uh, we're looking at 2, so we would have a tangent line at 2. But the tangent line is the same as the function. <coughs> so a change in the tangent line, which is the differential of y, is going to be equal to the change in the function, which is uh, delta y. But we can go through the same steps. We have dy equals y prime dx. y prime is 2. dx is 0 0.01.
So we have point zero 0.02. When we're looking for the two x values, we're starting at 2 and moving to 2.01. We're adding 0 0.01 to that value and we need to find the y value here and the y value there. So it's going to be the delta y is the difference of these. We have y evaluated at 2.01 minus y evaluated at 2. Uh, if you put a 2.01 in there, you get 4.02 and y evaluated at 2 is 4 plus 1, that's 5. So we have, ooh, I, uh, made, I forgot something here, this should be uh, plus 1 because I didn't write that. So if I put 2.01 there, it's 4.02 plus 1, that's 5. 5.02 minus 5 and we get 0 0.02. Uh, this is delta y is equal to that. Delta y and dy. So they're equal because um, it's a linear function. And we'll stop there.